Let us not forget everything that happens is by the will of a holy will. It's time to unite and say that we will be the best amongst men. It's not time to be extreme or to live but to stand together. Followers streaming every day. There is platforms. Trust me, you'll find a way. Soon, the followers. Allah has created everything based on God's nature. Uh, for a certain purpose and uh, if you look around you you will find out that some of these God's nature has been manipulated changed um, ruined and that's because of the uh, the devil and this is one of the uh, the statement that shaitan has made long long time ago because of his hostility against adam your great great grandfather adam السلام, so the satan after he was kicked out of the, the paradise he made this statement he said I'm going to uh, do my best to convince them to change God's nature. And the meaning of that, God's nature in our in the surroundings and everything around us, and God's nature within ourselves. So at any time you feel that there is something has been changed inside you, so that's an alarm, and you ask yourself what is going on. And the example, I'm going to repeat the same examples again, and these examples will make it easy for people um, to differentiate between the the blessing, the ni'am that Allah has bestowed upon you, and in order to sustain yourself, in order to live in um, healthy. Uh, prosperity and in order to um, to do your job and you allow your body to function and to have a balance between your body and your soul and uh, in order to have the uh, happiness in your life you need to to follow what Allah wa Taala has ordered you. Among that is to consume halal, not haram. And that consumption is to fulfill your desire with haram, with halal blessing. Um, like food and drink and other desires. So if you have if you have somebody who hasn't eaten apple, for example, he lived somewhere else and this country doesn't provide their people with apple. 
and then you bring these fruits in front of them and you ask them to help yourself taste it and uh, in another table you have a wine made out of apple yes you can make wine out of different fruits so what was what was the first um, uh, think that you can notice, like uh, when somebody eat apple or drink a wine. In the beginning, the first piece of apple, people will find uh, a desire somehow to that. They can tell you about the smell, the taste, and the touch, and the looking. But uh, when they drink a cup of wine, they vomit, some collapse, and they become dirty, uh, dizzy. I'm sorry. And same thing can apply to different haram, unlawful. So this is something uh, you can make to test the lawful and unlawful stuff. The first time you try the lawful stuff, you find the desire to that stuff because that desire has been built inside you which is like a receivers receivers for the smell the odor the taste um, the looking you have a receiver for that but the first cup of wine you try you will not like it and you vomit um some some people you know they got very dizzy collapse and if you look at the whole quran it says clearly that wine is made by the devil it is made by the devil the satan shaitan you can apply the same concept or the same uh, trial to other unlawful stuff today i'm talking about something that you know odd like homosexuality for example the female I have the desire for male and the male has the desire for female so what about if when you see somebody a male has a desire to a male a female has a desire to a female what is going on so ask them what was your first experience ask them to describe the first experience they have gone through this um they will say it was disgusting, uh, it was really terrible. Uh, that's for like uh, people who commit this act, like male, male or female, female. Last week I heard that Spain has issued a permission for sexual relationship with animal, a stop for So there is no limit. The sky is the limit for Satan to convince people to do whatever they can imagine, whatever they think about. Do you think this will stop now? It will continue on and on and on and on. 
Because Allah says in the Holy Quran, the straight path is one path. Okay? But the devil's paths are many, several, many paths. So be careful to take any exit and to get into the devil's, the Satan path. Um, so when you read what is going on around the world, you will find that there are universities, college um, programs. If you read about the syllabus, it is made by Satan, Shaitan. Even education, even for like higher education, yes, yes. Even for the knowledge. Subhanallah. Like interest, they teach interest, they teach riba. I'm just giving you a clue, but there are many examples. And Allah says in the Holy Quran, "Inna riba min al shaitan." The uh, riba is from shaitan. Um, so shaitan had made the promise to convince a certain group, and he said. I'm going to have um, a group of people to follow my path and I will take them out of your way. He's speaking to his Lord, to Allah. So, in your life, let me make this statement very clear. Whether you follow Allah's way or Satan's way, there is no other way. Be careful of that. And if you look at all the religions around the world, um, except Islam, their leaders, their scholars, they are a human shayateen, human satans. And they have a collaboration with shayateen from the jinn. If you look at Muslims, you will find out that there are people still on the right path, others deviated from the right path, and on each path, there is a shaitan collaborating with a human shaitan. I will say it again. And this is very important for converts, new Muslims. Make sure from whom you take your religion or you study your religion. Because what happened to people before us may happen to us. As Prophet said, You are going, uh, uh, like among you, there are people who would follow the footsteps of people before you step by step. The meaning is that deviation from the right path. So that happened also to Muslims, and you can say you can see that. You can see something even doesn't make sense to you. What is going on? And fatwa as well. There is something special about. Allah's knowledge. In order to understand Allah's knowledge, you need to have a good thinking 
and also a pure heart. Without a pure heart, people may go astray. Even was higher rank in Islamic knowledge and universities. Yeah, they might have a disease in their heart and you can you cannot take them take religion from them i'm saying that and i'll give you the proof from quran it happened at the time of moses السلام, and allah says about that person we have given such person not moses for, for sure but somebody else somebody else was given the knowledge but he went astray, so he deviated from the right path. And Allah described him in the whole Quran and says, So he's acting like a dog. The dog who's, you know, uh, who feels thirsty at all the time, opening his mouth and stick his tongue outside. So that's the description. Literal description in the whole Quran. Another verse he Allah says in the whole Quran about people who receive the knowledge, memorize the knowledge, but they don't act accordingly, they don't have reflection, so they become like a donkey. So Allah said that about people of book before Islam, and you can find that among Muslims as well. And, uh, you know, the list is long. So their heart has been converted to donkey's heart. The other one, his heart has been converted or is like to a dog's heart. Is that a change of uh, God's nature? Yes. So he was born pure, uh, based on the God's nature, with the uh, fitra, instincts. Everybody is born on the fitra. But after that, you got to choose between the right and the left. That's your choice. And Allah says in the Holy Quran, Fitrat Allah allati fatara al-nas alayha la tabdila al-khalq illa. God's nature has to remain the same with its function, its job. Um, you shouldn't change that. Otherwise, you are going to ruin and corrupt your body or your nature. Ask somebody the first time they smoke a cigarette. What did to them? What happened to them? Coughing, uh, red eyes, a headache, dizzy. So that's the first time you consume the Satan stuff. But once the person gets used to it, time after time, time after time, there will be a receivers inside our body. A desire is going to built inside our body and that receiver is going to ask for the devil's stuff satan stuff until the person become addicted to it once the person become addicted to it if you establish a dialogue asking them about, oh, this is bad, you have to get rid of this, it's going to be difficult. Because of what? They got used to it. 
they enjoy that. So they start to have a joy and a desire toward this stuff. Like made by a devil, Satan. And uh, that will be at the expenses of God's receivers. The 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 nature natural desire so you got a receivers has been made uh, by Allah inside your body and then people may follow the Satan shayateen and start to listen to them and to follow them it may be human shaitan or shaitan from the jinn. And once you start to take this stuff, there will be a, re a receivers built inside your body. A desire. Um, asking you all the time to consume that stuff until people become addicted. So my advice is don't start from the beginning. Don't try because there is no guarantee that you can come back. Try to be wise, not an idiot. Why do I try this? It's a it, it, like it's a hard. I know somebody may come back, make tawbah, repentance, and um, they can have help from around. But others, it's hard for them. And you can look at like drugs, like cocaine, heroin, that destroy the desire for food, um, for like fatherhood, um, for husband and wife relationship. Um, for people who are good in their job, so they lose their dignity. Oh. So the desire that is built by consuming shayateen, shaitan stuff, is going to destroy the God's nature, receivers or desire. That's why when you ask someone who's drunk, do you have the same appetite? Um, have you lost something? Some desire for something yes and they can name it i lose the desire to this and this and this and that the one who smokes cigarette have you lost something yes i lost that desire i lost that and this and this and this and at the top of that a desire to be a great like a good worshiper like um to stand before allah and to offer your prayer and to read the whole quran this is going to be you know um for them is gone time after time reduce reduction to reduce the time that they pray and they care about their prayer and after that they got lost so in order to live your life accordingly and to fulfill your duties and to be a good human based on god's nature we have to stay away from that devil's stuff the shayateen stuff. Fitrat Allah alati fatra nasa alayha la tabdeel al khalq Allah. Don't play. Don't uh, try any manipulation or anything that you can change or ruin God's nature. Inside you or around you, in the surroundings. 
So if, if the fruit, the way it is, why do you convert fruits to wine? Why? So you look at this and uh, you feel it can apply to all the that change. But now let me bring something to clarify this. Um, there is a good change and bad change. A good change um, is to add a certain change so you can eat something like rice. No one can eat rice the way it is. You have to cook your rice. Um, meat, raw meat, you need to cook the meat. So adding a temperature, adding this process, will allow you to eat and enjoy. But what we were talking about is the bad exchange, the corruption that happened to God's nature inside us and in the surroundings. فطرات الله التي فطر الناس عليها لا تبديل لخلق الله. And Allah will not change anything happen to you unless if you take the initiatives and you change yourself from a bad situation to a good situation. So we need to take the initiatives. So now somebody may ask me, oh, what happened if something something like that has occurred to me? Like smoking, drinking. Allah says in the whole Quran, you must take the, initi the initiatives to stay away from that and you move toward righteous people. You change your group, you change your friend, because these are acting like human devil, shayatin. The one who offer you the wine, offer you cigarettes or other stuff. No, this is bad. And if you are in the right path, be careful, never take any eggs following the devil's way because there is no guarantee after a while you are going to come back and once it happened to you just to return back and if you do so Allah will help and support you as Allah says in the Holy Quran and uh, even the sayyad the bad deeds the wrongdoing will be converted into a good deeds. So I'm seeing these things and inshallah we'll listen to you. So um, Sister Layla will lead the discussion inshallah. Jazakumullah. Alhamdulillah, this is a, a great reminder for us all because uh, we've been speaking about this uh, for the past um, uh, couple of weeks you know, that fitra that is within us, that is inspired to want to do what's good and what's pleasing to Allah, that fitra that is fueling our faith as we try, it tries to find its way back to Allah. But shaitan, you know, he's doing everything in his power to take us away from that. You guys should be able to contribute uh, a lot to this. Uh, I don't know who's on that iPad, but whoever's on the iPad, you can go ahead and start. Uh, they left out. Oh, she left out. Okay, well, what, until the iPad person comes back. And if, by the way, guys, if I take your hand down, that's because with this new Zoom, when your hand goes up, it messes up our thing. So uh, go ahead, Fatima. You can go ahead and take the mic. Okay. Assalamu <laughs> Um Contributing to what Dr. Asin was saying about um, going into um, bad things and being, you know, I would say puberty started my bad things. Um, trying to be 
with, you know, trying to fit in with everyone. Um, I remember being 13 years old and some friends of mine, well, they're supposed to be friends, and they were smoking cigarettes. So I thought, oh, well, I'm going to try to smoke a cigarette. I'm going to see what it's like. And I got dizzy, as Dr. Aslan said. But in the time of getting dizzy, my mom walked down and was walking down and she caught me smoking a cigarette. So I tried to throw the cigarette down, but she says, oh, no, I seen what you were doing. So she tried to start me to smoke. You know, she said, oh, you want to try to smoke cigarettes and you think that's good for you. And it's not. Long story short, I smoked up until I was 18 years old, until I just like went cold turkey. Um, I was. I was lost, you know, as you know, as I say, the fit, as they say, the fit, you know, my, I, I didn't know which way to go. Um, 19 years old, I became Muslim, alhamdulillah, I found my way. Um, bad things had happened probably in between, but I came back to Islam and I am grateful and I'm sorry that I did the things that I did. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me for all what I have done. We do stray away from ourselves and because we don't know and we don't have the right guidance and different things like that. But alhamdulillah, I have the guidance now. Um, and I, I just try to stay on a straight path and do the right thing. I hope I'm not off subject and I hope I... I guess I'm going to make it short and simple and I'll hope that you last one right now. This is right to the point. This is a, a, an experience that you have shared with us. And Alhamdulillah, um, you were able to uh, return back. I believe like uh, embracing Islam uh, was a yes. big in your life. And Allah uh, helped you and guide you through. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, who else would like to uh, contribute and share uh, with this? Uh, go ahead, Sister Anissa. At the age of 15, my cousin, who used to visit us twice a year, she lives in Chicago even today. She's much older than I am, and she's still alive. And she came down and visited. She was at my cousin Kelly's house. And she says, uh, lying on the sofa, she says, uh, Sandy, go ahead and uh, light the cigarette for me. I said, okay. So I took the cigarette, went in the kitchen, held my face under the gas stove, turned on the burner where I've seen cousin Kelly do a lot, and puffed that cigarette, took it back to her. And as I puffed it, I held it and sludge. Sludge filled my blood veins, a horrible feeling. And I was just as drunk as I could be going back down that hallway to give her that cigarette. When I gave her that cigarette, I sat down. She said, you okay, Cousin B? I said, yeah, I'm fine. She says, do you smoke? I said, yeah. So there's my picture put out, completely dark. I just told a lie. And from that point, I visited my mom later that summer, and my mom is a young woman, and she was into the, you know, drinking thing, and she said, uh, I need your cigarette lit. I said, I'll light it for you. She said, oh, do you smoke? I said, yes, I do. I'm not going to lie. I lit that one on a wood stove. So from 15 until the age of 30, before I became a Muslim, I was told three weeks prior to coming into this religion, Ramadan was coming, and these are the rules of Ramadan. You don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't do anything like that during the daylight hours, blah, blah, blah. And I was invited to go to a uh, break fast, which I did. That's why I met my so-called first person that I so-called married. And that night before Ramadan came in, I finished my last Salem's Lights, eager to start Ramadan. We had a store down here called High's Ice Cream. It stayed open until nine. The child in the bed upstairs was seven years old. And I was so distraught because I wasn't sure if I could make it through the night without a cigarette. 
because I had to be a cold turkey. I left that child in bed, got in my car, went to High's Ice Cream about four blocks down the street and picked up my Satan's lights because that's all I could smoke at that time. I brought that thing back home and now I'm thinking, you just left the child here by himself. Anything could have happened. He was sleeping. Oh boy, this shaitan had me gone. I spent that whole night waiting for the sunlight to appear because I tried my best guys to smoke that whole pack of cigarettes before the sunlight came in. I was killing myself, but I made it through. I made it through that entire Ramadan without even the desire for a cigarette. That desire came about two or three months after I had become a Muslim. I just couldn't take it anymore. It had a hold on me. I thought about it all the time. It just never left my mind. And I'm working in an office as an employment interviewer. I would go into the men's bathroom with my cigarette, stand on the toilet, and blow the smoke up into the vent so my clerk would know I was smoking. Now, you know, anytime you smoke, you're going to smell it. You're going to smell it on yourself. People going to smell it on you. So Shaitan really had me going, and I finally gave the cigarettes up a few months later, being shamed like Fatima was saying. I'm so shamed because I had already embraced this plan. Allah had forgiven me for my sins, and here I am again. Got to come back to Allah like a drunk person, drunk off the cigarettes. So, Panama. Last week it was the drink. This week is the cigarettes. Mashallah. Uh, I have a question for you. Um, yes. Have you ever have you ever seen a physician who tells you don't smoke, but they smoke? I mean, and they cannot they cannot stop. You know. Let me they... think because I didn't go to doctors until I was about twenty six years old, and the doctors that I went to, we did not smoke. He wasn't Cuban. I don't remember. I don't remember any of my doctors smoking. And if they smoke, they haven't smoked around me. But I do know doctors do smoke. They certainly do. And I've seen them do it on TV. So I guess they're not the real doctors. But anyway, I've never known any of my doctors to smoke. So and they know they that they, they know, know that this is harm harmful, and uh, this is very dangerous for them. Yes. Uh, however, they keep smoking because they become addicted to it. They are addicted. They certainly are. That's an addictive stuff. That stuff is worse than, I think it's worse than drugs. I'm not sure, but I think cigarettes are worse than drugs. Not only, it, you don't have to sneak the cigarette, you got to sneak the drugs. But the cigarette is free, everybody's smoking. You know, you can get up in the morning, that's the first thing you like. You eat something, you drink something, that's the second thing you like, and it's just a constant thing like that. You and know? there are Muslims, like for Ramadan, it's hard yeah. for them to fast. Yeah. And once they break their fast with like some dates, they start mm. smoking. They start to smoke. I know one brother, uh, may Allah forgive him for his sins and make his grave white. He was a bus driver and he smoked during the day. He smoked at night during Ramadan, and I would say, brother, you know, you shouldn't be smoking, you're not even, your past is not even accepted. I know, sister. And you know, he got killed about six months ago in the car, maybe longer than that, at the time it's gone for me. Maybe about a year now he's been dead. Uh, the rumor was his car rolled back on him, and we don't know for sure because nobody's telling us the truth, so we don't really don't know. But he's a Muslim brother, he was a good brother. He was great at computers, and he was always doing dawah. You find all the non-Muslims on the job that I just came off of giving me the credence. Because he was teaching them to say that. But they just didn't know him, but we know him. And may Allah have mercy for me, and may Allah have mercy for me. Yeah, this is one of the things that, that one of the ways that Shaitan takes us away from the nature of ourself, the nature of that fitra. You know, because the, the, he works with the soul. Our personal jinn works with the soul because as Allah says in the Quran, the soul is what's criminal by nature. It's attracted to what's bad for it. It's attracted to what's dirty for it. The fitra has attached to the heart. 
The heart is attracted to what's good and clean. So we're struggling. We're in that jihad and nafs. We're struggling between our heart and our soul, trying to satisfy the fitra and, and resist the soul. And uh, uh, alhamdulillah, some of us succeed in that and others don't. You know, the soul, shaitan, will try to make you become addicted to that which is dangerful, that which is bad and dirty. So cigarettes and drugs and alcohol are all examples. But what are some more things, guys, that can stand in the way besides uh, drugs? Uh, because cigarettes is a drug, too. Uh, what are some other things that can stand in the way that shaitan uses to stand in the way of your natural um, uh, essence? Anyone else? Go ahead, uh, Jean Louis. One example, um, one example which ties into everything but I hope Can you fix your mic? Hold on one minute. Take it off of Bluetooth. Okay. I said one of the that I can truly use, and that is it falls in line of you know growing up and working within the lines of this music industry, you know that that brought in love of acceptance and wanting so much to be a part of um, the scene um, is men, you know uh, the, the 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 glitz and glamour of the opposite sex, you know, of these people that not only will they comment you things, you know, they start to look more, more um, interesting. They start to look more appealing to you. So, you know, and, it, and they're very beautiful. They're very handsome. And I caught myself into that with a particular individual. And um, later on, after becoming Muslim, you still, you know, I didn't really know, I, I knew, I was, Islam was for me. And I wanted to implement Islam to the best of my ability because it just felt right. But at the same time, there were these other vices that were really trying to get a hold of me. And one of them were good talking, you know, um, men who looked good, who had the money, who had the glitz and glamour, who could promise you things, but you knew in the back of your mind that that was just a show. It wasn't the reality, you know, of everything that was going on. And for you to them, you're just a number, regardless if you had talent, remember, if, regardless if you had a gift or regardless, you know, or anything. So that was the one thing that I seen predominantly that would um, get a lot of people caught up because what ended up happening is when you're not really, you know, exposed to that life, you think it's one way, but you get a really quick eye opener of how it really is. It's not that, you know, like you always say, it's not like that fairy tale Romeo and Juliet, you know, ending. Like this is actuality. These people want you, regardless if you think that it's going to be one way, you're just a number. There's a, a, a big amount of, um, Sex and, um, hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. There's, there's a lot of promiscuity. You know, there's a lot of girls that come in and the men, because it is a dominated man industry, you know, they don't look at you as an individual. They look at you as a number. So they promise you things, you know, and because it's almost like um, a situation where it's, I'm going to pimp you out. Even though you're under me, I'm going to pimp you out for your talent so that you could do X, Y, and Z for me and bring in that money. But I'm telling you, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the midst and he knows exactly where he wants you, trust and believe. He's going to put you where you have to be, regardless if you are attracted to something that you know is, you know, the opposite of where you should be. And this is something that um, a lot of people don't really like to touch on because, you know, they they kind of embarrass the whatnot. But it's a, it's it's a it's a truth. It's a it's 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 um real life. It happens. You know, some of these people they look good. They 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 want you to come along or whatnot. And you you do you you find yourself drowning because you have this fantasy in your mind of how it's going to be, and then you have the reality of how it's going to be. So, 
this yeah, is where all, we find ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah, all, all this fantasy is from shaitan, from uh, devil. Um, I want to mention that everybody, there are two uh, qareen assigned to everybody. So everybody has uh, what is called qareen. So one from jinn and one from angel assigned. So they join everybody until they die. So they stay on the graveyard. So everybody. So what happened is that um, if you listen to shaitan and if you take any eggs from the straight path, now you become like um, a toy on the hand of the devil to convince you to go left and right, whatever. So I have heard that a lot for married people. Sometimes they marry to a beautiful wife. And because of this issue, shaitan will it change in their eyes, the looking of their wife. So they will see her ugly. And when you go, when they go to the club, the nightclub, um, shaitan will make them to see the beauty on the drunk ladies or females. Um, so subhanallah, you have the halal at your home, but you go to the nightclub and you are attracted to unlawful and haram stuff. So if we will say, oh, I have, I can see, I can feel the fantasy. I can feel the joy. I can feel this is a fake feeling. This is not true. Um, the only way to protect yourself is you repeat the, like a short surah, what does this mean? You kick out the devil. You kick the devil out of your way at home while you're eating and don't go to a place that occupied by devils because once you get there, you will be hunted by them and then there is something will bad will go inside your brain. So be careful of that. And as I mentioned last time, if you look deeply, like if you do, if you, if you, um, like you look in depth to the music and how they designed a music and they created a music to shake human body, uh, this is backward going back, back, back to a devil who taught human how to do that. So and instead of reading the whole Quran and uh, to be humble uh, to the extent that it will shake our body um, out of the fear of Allah and humbleness and love of Allah. So shaitan has made you an alternative to shake your body and to feel high. Um, so what you have said is something like um, they have in the nightclub, they have uh, prostitution, they have uh, wine, uh, they have drugs, all bad things. It is a corrupt place. So you will find bad things are celebrating and uh, have been um, like acting altogether against God's nature. Sister Layla. Yes, Alhamdulillah. I see we have Sister Sahar here. MashaAllah. Sister Sahar, go ahead and share with us, please. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, uh, I, want, I want to tell you about uh, something useful I found for you. Uh, I recommend to a channel on the YouTube uh, where you can hear Quran in both languages. Each ayah uh, translated. You, 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 can, you hear it one time in Arabic, then you hear it in English. It's simple English, clear English. I recommend it to you. Uh, go to YouTube, then uh, search for 
meaning of Islam or the meaning of Islam. Once you get that channel, uh, go to the tab uh, of playlist, then uh, choose the, the Quran folder. You would find 114 surahs, the whole Quran translated, and you would love it. You can hear it uh, in, uh, uh, at your home, uh, in, car, in your car, whatever, wherever you would, you would like to hear it. Okay? The meaning of Islam channel. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Um, yes, Alhamdulillah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, we've used that channel here as Sunnah followers too. And it's wonderful, like you say, it's beautiful to uh, ponder. But the thing is with that, we have to ponder. Ponder what's being said. Don't just put it on to replace music. We have to think about the words and and what's being said, what Allah is saying, that's how we keep that fitra burning in our heart. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Go ahead, Sister Sahar. Continue. Okay. Uh, I divided my uh, participation tonight uh, to two parts. Uh, I, I want to uh, illustrate the meaning of the ayah uh, we are uh, discussing. Uh, and the, the other part, uh, I, I, uh, I would speak about four elements that is what the shaitan doing in our world nowadays. Okay. So I go to the first part, which is the meaning of the ayah. Uh, I say it in Arabic first. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. La'anahu Allah wa qala li attakhizanna min ibadika nasiban mafruda. Wa la'udallinnahum wa la'umaniyannahum wa la'amrannahum falibattikna azana al-an'am wa la'amrannahum falibattikna azana al-an'am. يُبَتِّكُنَّ آذَانَ الْأَنْعَامِ وَلَا آمُرَنَّهُمْ فَلْيُغَيِّرْنَ خَلْقَ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَتَّخِذَ الشَّيْطَانَ وَلِيًّا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ لَقَدْ خَسِرَ فِسْعَانَ مُبِينًا صدق الله العظيم Allah cursed the shaitan and the shaitan said he will take from your servant specific portion and I will misneed them and I will give them hope and I will command them to cut the ears of cattle, and I will command them to change, to, so to change the creation of Allah. And whoever take devil of shaitan as a guardian in a state of Allah, he suffers a clear loss. The illustration of the ayah, Allah cursed the devil, who is our clear enemy, who works hard to have certain percentage of people to follow him, to be in hell together. He misleads them away of the right way they should follow. And he gives people fake permissions. Which you, uh, and, and he beautify the sense. And he command people in the past to cut the ears of livestock as a sign it become prohibited due to its reserved for the idols. While this is not true, Allah didn't order them to do this. He want to let uh, to let what's halal to be haram, to support a kuf and a shirk. Livestock are grace of God, grace to human. Uh, they sal saluted, salute them, slap them, sorry, they, sal they slap them, uh, they are halal. They will convince them they are for the idols, so th they became haram because you cannot eat them. Don't eat them. And by the time, this is what happened in the past. And by the time, in our days, they will deviate people to make plastic surgeries, transgender surgeries, which are bad as what they did in the livestock at the past. And homosexuality, which is spread nowadays, while it's a huge sin against the fitra, and others do eyebrow removal and have tattoo eyebrow, it looks like eyebrow, in a state, which is forbidden in Islam. All these are examples of changing the creation of Allah. Devil deviates people to do such actions, to be a way of God and to be in hell. So those who answer the devil's orders 
and takes him as guardian are losers. They lose everything. God preserve, God preserve us. us. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, that verse that she yeah, that she's using. That's uh, the verse that we talked about before, the verse where Ibn Abbas radiallahu anha tells us that uh, uh, not only does shaitan do everything in his power to take the fitra away from its natural state, but he'll cause us to take on the appearance of something other than a human. We'll uh, do things to take on the appearance of an animal or a flower. And this is why tattoos are haram because Allah didn't create us with a flower on our face or a horn in our head, you know? So that just shows not only will shaitan attack the fitra, uh, us inwardly through the fitra, but outwardly too, to try to change the creation of Allah. Oh, this is wonderful. Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Asim. Okay. Uh, um. I I want to speak about four elements that leads, uh, that leads to poor parenting and is devil's temptation. Uh, the first one in our in our days, in our century, uh, they convinced the woman to be shy of uh, to be titled as housewife. Although that woman shares her family every minute, educate them, educate their, her children, uh, good manners, principles, and read books with them, and give them, uh, and, and, uh, and guide them perfectly. Yeah, you mentioned and, something that uh, Sister France Jean's knows. Yes, Jean-Louis. Has brought up, yeah. Um, if you read the history of uh, women in Islam, you will find that women uh, are honorable. Um, they have a highest status as a female among any nation. So, and uh, that was given to them at the time that uh, the God's nature was denied in Europe. So in Europe, they were talking about does female has a soul and if she does what is her job in life is this to worship god like us or to be submissive to men and to obey men and uh, that was that's what the discussion took place um, 60 years before uh, the time Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in France, I have uh, I have read that. So at that time, Islam came to prove that uh, women and male, like uh, male and female, are equal in front of Allah, but they have different jobs. That's it, because God's nature for human, for women, is different from God's nature for men. Nowadays the uh, civilized world the modern civilization claim that men and like male and female are equal and they have the same thing you can switch male to female and you can switch female to male based on their desire and they ignored god's nature and that was uh, what sister uh, sahar uh, explained in the first part. You may continue, Sahar, please. Culture enforcement always want 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 women to run in the street all the time and leave her children alone at home for a long time. And this might lead to children who use the internet all the day time and use harmful applications, change their behavior. Moreover, teachers in the Arab world are being pivotal in movies. Teachers, I mean teachers of primary school and secondary school, uh, okay, in movies especially. And one more thing, there are brain drain scientists who, uh, who work outside, out, out, uh, out of the countries and thinkers. Uh, all of them are being marginalized. They are not shown as role models. So the new generation 
is targeted. They are lonely. Their mothers busy working out of the house. Plus, they think teachers are very little persons in society, and they don't so they don't consult them uh, concerning their life. And real models, uh, scientists and thinkers, are hidden, while fake role models are shown, like actors, singers, foot football, uh, football players. And uh, the first thing is media. Uh, and I mean movies especially. Media, uh, movies distort, distort the image of scholars and imams to iso isolate that thing. So the news generation is targeted by social media and different applications and movies. And fake role models, which are sometimes used as devil new tools. These are devil, devil new tools. The, the, the different, uh, the, the, the many applications, many websites, in our century, uh, they are uh, to spread homosexuality, plastic surgery, adultery, uh, addiction, and uh, brainwash. These are results of uh, culture technology invasion. And that smartphone affects the new generation badly due to all what I mentioned. Uh, um, and yeah, I would say uh, all what uh, you said now, uh, due to um, the uh, the technology and innovation, um, has been made by non-Muslims. So they don't have guidelines. But uh, if you look at Muslim civilization and uh, how much they develop, like the technology and innovation in different areas, like in biology and uh, uh, physics, astronomy, um, you will find that they, they had a guideline, they had a limitation. So they didn't cross the line so that they can be in a dangerous area. But nowadays, all these are made by uh, mostly non-Muslims, mm -hmm. so um, they have a freedom of speech, freedom of uh, science, technology, innovation, and they can design any experiment, even if uh, like uh, something that is odd, they don't care because just science now, for the sake of science and fiction, right? Yeah, that's yeah. true. That shows what happens uh, when you don't feed that fitra with remembrance of Allah. If the fitra, the fitra is just burning out, the soul is just then took control, and it's all about your desires and your likes and your wants, and not Allah. Your your fitra has been stunted, yeah, from its natural. Okay. And uh, they receive uh, credits. Mm -hmm. So, um, like uh, the international committees encourage them to do so mm -hmm. so this is something that we should you know we should think about it as a muslims we don't do our job right so everybody wherever you are you have a job to do and uh, you should uh, respect uh, your religion and you should uh, go by the guidelines and by the limitation and uh, if you are smart in your area, try to be creative, not just to follow the mainstream and copy whatever around you. No, this is bad. This is not right. So, and I'm saying this, and you can, you know, you can apply this to any, like, for example, Muslim countries. Do you think any Muslim countries is free from riba? No. No way. Because of what? Because their financial system has been uh, like merged and engaged and collaborated with the international finance system. So they go by 
uh, 27%, 25%, we are going to raise this. And they go and pray and say, Allahu Akbar, fake, fake. What is going on? Like, you got your salary from Riba, you got this from Riba, you got this from Riba, and you go for Hajj and for Umrah, like pilgrimage and Umrah, and you fast the month of Ramadan, and the food you bring at home in Ramadan from Riba. So, this is, so I'm just giving you an example, but you can apply this to most of the investments in uh, the gambling and in, uh, in the cities here, like in the USA, like Las Vegas and others, most of the, you know, the wealthy investors are Muslims. <laughs> so they invest their money in, in haram. And uh, I don't want to explain how haram it is, but you understand. And they take the interest of that money of their countries. It's nonsense. So um, we got to to take this, uh, you know, seriously. And especially for people who are raised, like for Muslims who are raised in uh, foreigner countries, they have the chance to study and learn and to be among in uh, mentors, uh, highly educated. So uh, please make something, bring something to support your religion. Don't live without a job that Allah will give you the reward for that. Um, Sister Sahar, you may continue. I know that you still have some points. Okay. Uh, there are some evil organizations work on demoralization societies. They believe that it takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a society. Look at because, that, yes. because this is uh, the sufficient time to educate one generation, one lifetime span of a person, which she is dedicated to study, to shaping up uh, the, uh, the outlook, the ideology, uh, the, their personality. No more, no less. Usually it takes from 15 to 20 years. So they use this sometimes, that new tools, of internet and social media to shape and movies to shape new generation identity, keep them busy, stuck on the internet with no meaning productivity, and teach them harmful behavior. So we should work on protecting our kids, and they, uh, don't let them use uh, without uh, supervision. Let them use internet and application under supervision. Uh, while uh, uh, mature, mature persons use internet wisdomly to learn something useful, to ease communication, uh, and sometimes to run business. Uh, and to conclude, we know that the devil has new tools for deviation. So we should be aware of that and minimize the usage of social media and grasp on God. And yeah, my, mistake. Yeah, my my comment is that we shouldn't blame them, but we should blame ourselves, right. because they have no education about the guidelines of uh, Allah. No, so they do their job, and they have the motivation uh, from, uh, as you said, international organization to reshape uh, the whole country. Uh, through 25 years. 25 years is a long time, but they don't give up. They said, oh, we are going to do that. Because they really believe, that they believe truly that this is the way they can bring civilization to other countries. But uh, if you ask some of these people after, you know, for those who revert to Islam, they will say, oh, I was in jerk. I was not right because that was really bad. So, Sister Layla may uh, shed the light on that. Yes, I mean, you know, Allah, you know, this is what happens. It's a great example as to what happens, you know, how the difference between the believer 
and a non-believer when we're living in a secular world, as we've been discussing, when we're living in a non-religious world, you know, there are more people who don't believe in Allah than there are people that do. Allah tells us that there's going to be more people in hell than in, than in paradise. You, you know, know how much? One in paradise out of a thousand. There you go. As the hadith, you remember the hadith? Exactly, that's a lot. And so, but we have guidelines, like Dr. Asim said, you know, and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded us, we're supposed to be distinct. We're supposed to stand out over them. You know, we are an upright nation. You know, we are witnesses over the others. Like Dr. Asim said, what are we doing? Yeah, we can see what the people that don't believe in Allah are doing, but what are we doing to counter that? You know, what are we doing to counter that? And that's the problem. And Allah is going to ask us about that. You knew the rules. You knew the guidelines. You knew that you would be in a, a secular environment. But what did you do to call the, the people back to me? What did you do to fuel your fitra and the fitra of others? You know, our allegiance, our wala, our bera, that tahliya that we talked about and tahliya. You know, subhanAllah, you guys should be able to contribute to this. Who would like to uh, speak on this? You know, anyone? Is, is, is Sister Sahar finished her point? Yeah, she just, what? Well, yeah, um, she okay. said, yeah, she just. Yes, I think, thank you. Yeah, alhamdulillah, That's that was okay. excellent, excellent too, yeah. Sister Sahar. Yeah, anyone, May Leon, would you like to share, May Leon? Go ahead, May Leon. And uh, 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 yeah, May Leon, can you hear me? I know you've been waiting. Did she go away? <laughs> Rahima? Fresno? What happened? You guys I'm were really not clear on what the discussion is it's about. The same I thought thing. it was a, It is. I it's thought it was. I thought it was about. The okay, yeah, yes. I'm gonna just go like I'm gonna do me. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna do I mean. Okay, we were talking about um, to me, your soul and your heart, it just your desires. I never was one to be a follower. I'm I'm basically a leader. I was the first one in my family to become Muslim in my dad. So I'm not what, cigarettes. I didn't smoke no cigarettes because they stank. Um, so I, I can't flow with that part of it. I'm not in my fitra. That part of me that, that, that I know I have a jinn and an angel <clears throat> and my angel is strong, way stronger than my jinn. That, that part of me, that, that fitra that, that was, that went, that left my, that, that went into my heart from my soul after the soul got here, my soul is, is not like the ordinary soul. I rule, you know, I don't have that many desires. I, I work very hard to do the best I can with what Allah tells me to do. I do as much of what Allah tells me to do as I can. He says, stay away from this. I stay away from it. And I do as much of the good as I can. So um, this, the, the, my fitra is, is, is really, is, I'm not no follower. It's I'm not wrong. no little follower. I mean, you can be sitting out there smoking. I'm not going to smoke. You stink. I don't want to do that. You're drinking. I ain't never drunk. My grandfather and them was alcoholics and that stuff turned me off. It's awful. So it, it affected me in that way for me not to do nothing like that. So I don't, I don't do that. So I don't know if this is really relating to what you guys yes, were yes, talking it about is. or yes. what, but it, it's just me. It's just that you have learned to train. We're going to talk about that in more detail this uh, today, at the beginning of the day. You've learned to train your soul. And that's the, that's all about what we're talking about, purifying the heart, purifying the soul. Alhamdulillah, over the years, due to your experience and the way your you worked on your good uh, qualities, and, you know, you've learned to train or tame your soul to do what you command it to do instead of it ruling you. And you listen to your fitra. You're one of those people that follow your heart. You know how they say, listen to your heart, follow your heart. You know, you've learned to follow your heart. 
You listen to the angel of the heart. You don't allow the gin that's assigned to you to whisper into you your heart to get you to give in to your desires. But a lot of people haven't reached that. That's our, our life to str struggle. That's the yeah, struggle. That's, a, that's a blessing from Allah yes, it to is. be saved from this. Yes. Uh, however, uh, if someone went through the other way around, uh, commit uh, such sins and mistakes and then repent, and uh, return back to Allah, uh, they will have a higher, like a higher status yes. based on the repentance. Because Allah looks at the heart of people, so when they see somebody blaming themselves and feeling bad about what happened and what was going on between them and their Lord, so when Allah sees that, so... Um, Allah accepts their repentance and uh, all their bad deeds will be uh, converted to a good deeds. So, uh, so Allah is, uh, is the mer all the, the merciful. So, um, like you get all the mercy from Allah. And we're in different so, levels too. Like I say, your test, like you're like me. I'm, I've always been a leader too. I'm strong. I've never been tested with sex, drugs, rock and roll, born in America in the sixties and Muslim all my life. That is rare. I mean, come on. And I'm talking Sunni, uh, Salafi. I ain't talking about no Elijah Muhammad, but Allah tests me in other ways. Your test has been with death your love for your family. You see what I'm saying? Cause you're stronger than that. You're not, you're like me. We don't give into the desires of the soul, but my test is my family, my daughter, my grandkids. And that's your test too. Your children, death, death. So Allah tests us all different, uh, differently depending on where we are. You know, those of us that don't give into the desire, we got other weaknesses. You know, so whatever you you have to know yourself, know what your weaknesses are, you know, and work on them. You may not have to work on what what Anissa has to work on, but you got something. And you've been handling it, you know, so it's we're all different. And today we are asking people about their experience, not only uh, from themselves, but uh, from others like their family, uh, the, uh, the co-workers. Um, and their thoughts about uh, how to manage that. So yes. do, do we still have somebody who's interested to share their thoughts? Yeah, Jamila and you, anyone else? This is Jamila, are you around? Yes, I'm around. <laughs> oh, everybody was given their but So right now I can only think about the future. You know, I'm still learning about it, but I just think a lot for all the struggles that I've, I've con come through. Yes, I was I'm in the era when uh, they was making home brew, but I was a kid then, you know, but I remember, you know, picking the peaches and they made peach brew, uh, picking peaches, plums, muscadines, scuffanines, you know, and apples and all those things, but they didn't let me see how they did it. But yes, they made it. I used to uh, see people come into the house. They're walking straight when they come, but they be walking crooked when they leave, you know. So fast forward on. Yes, I've had the opportunity to deal with cigarettes and smoking a little reefer. And um, I had someone who kept saying, get off those cigarettes, you know. And um, I, you know, I had to pray and ask the Lord, I said, you know, help me a lot to get off these things. And I believe he did, you know, I wasn't strong like I am now, but I believe he did because one time I went and brought a pack. And when I got home, I decided to draw off and it made me totally sick. And I took that pack and threw it in the trash and I never smoked a cigarette again. And uh, yes, I've had opportunity to drink a little uh, wine and stuff through my life. But I just think the law, uh, because at, at those times when I was doing those things and I thought this is not the way I was brought up. This is not the way that my life should go. I, I got to get out from around these people that I'm around because they're they're not going anywhere with their life, you know, and I, I need to go. I need to travel another road. <laughs> That's what I thought about my life. And um, to make it fast forward. Um, 
I have to say these two weeks that we've been talking about the FITRA, and I have to say this week, I'm still kind of crying over it, but it just blew my mind, you know, and blew my heart out um, talking about the FITRA and standing on Arafat as a soul after Allah had, you know, put us down here. Uh, I didn't know that exist until we talked about it. Uh, a lot of the things we talked about the future, I did not know it exists. So I'm just new at it, but I'm doing my best to try to soak it in. But we made a covenant with a lie. And um, I was, as uh, Sister Leila was teaching about it, I'm like, what? Wow, that is really something on Arafat, you know? So, and where Allah kept the souls at, I mean, all of this is like blowing my mind. And when, you know, she was talking about um, the struggle, that little light that you have. And I said, oh, that's what it was. You know, I kept trying to make this journey to where I'm at now. And I went up the hill, down the hill, on my face, on, you know, trying to get there, but I didn't know where I was going, you know? And uh, so when she talked about that struggle when you're getting there, but, you know, we talked about, um, the dead that's in us is in the heart. And then, you know, the angel that's in us, in the soul. I mean, in the, in the, I'm sorry, the dead that's in us is in the soul and the, in the, uh, the good angel is in our heart. And I just said to myself, you know, when I was listening at her, I said, oh, Allah, I just thank you for letting, if it wasn't a big light in me, I just thank you for that little tiny, tiny light that kept me struggling just to hear this lesson. You know, it's just so powerful, and um, I just didn't know all of this exists. I'm, I'm just like a little baby, just taking it in. But I just thank the law for the struggles. It let me know that the secular world, that you know, if you don't have a law in you, you'll fall for anything. You know, you you can't be strong without a law, and I thank the law for. Um, Blessing me to hear, hear his divine words, you know, and his divine word called me here, right here, you know, and I have no desire to go back there, but I'm gonna have to say this, sometime when you, you're going through um, some problems in your life, you have to shake the shaitan, that little whispering one, he'll come back and say, maybe you just go get a cigarette, you know, you remember you how you used to smoke it, you know? Uh, yeah, you didn't got to put all of this on. You know, it's too hot, you know. But I think about hell is hotter than this. That's what I have to tell myself. And then I have to say, I would have been laughing at me and I don't need you talking to me because I don't want to go where you're going, where you got to go. But I know, like we was talking, we got to stand before Allah. And that hit me. I got I to gotta stand there before him, you know. And I don't even know if he's going to forgive me, but, you know, I just thank the Lord for letting that light shine. And this is this lesson is so powerful. It's just powerful. Right now. Like I say, I cannot stop crying right now. So that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you, Sister Jamila. I, I would like just to uh, stress on the, uh, to, uh, on the fitra. So um, the, the, the easiest way to see the God's nature, the fitra. When you look at uh, animals, birds, uh, fish, different kingdom, like animal kingdom, fish kingdom. So each uh, creatures, they have a certain fitra. They follow God's nature for their type. And they remain so until they die. They don't have the freedom. They don't have the free will. They don't have the choice. So they are following a certain way till they die. But for human being, we have the free will, we have the freedom, we can choose. That's why you will find some people can keep their fitra the way it is till they die. Others, it become ruined and corrupted because of what? Because following the devil, the Satan way. Shukran. Ma yes. I'd like to add later before you come in to what Sister Jamila was saying, because I'm one of those ones too where people would come and 
they make that home go out in the woods and bring to the house and she's right the people come in straight and they walk out walk crooked so you know that's something you didn't want to deal with but what i'm fighting almost constantly and this is for mina because i have experienced certain things that experience is still with me it hasn't left me every time i see a movie that looks kind of glamorous and people are having uh drinks i can hear the click of the ice in their glass i don't know if they're drinking wine or if they're drinking water on the movies but in my heart oh shaitan wants to say okay you know go ahead and put some ice in your orange juice put some ice in your milk put some ice in your water just so you can hear that click just a little click so it said we'll be fighting that i'll be fighting that till the day i leave this planet so Allah. so how do you do that you're blessed amina you didn't get hooked on that stuff Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, Alhamdulillah. Sister Rahima, I saw that you wanted to share. It's good to have you finally take the mic. Go ahead. <laughs> Sister Tony. <laughs> um, one of the things that um, I wanted to uh, talk about is how Shaitan, he uses um, he uses confusion within within Muslims, within our community. And he creates the confusion by uh, using um, people following different sets in Islam, um, creating um, chaos. They're creating chaos, frustration, confusion, and just um, all around playing ignorance because there are so many people. We're, they, they're claiming to be Muslim, but how many people are actually practicing Islam the way that Allah told us to practice? Not the way that some somebody's sheikh or somebody else's um, culture told them to practice or told them to do something um, according to what Allah tells us to do. So it's so much misinformation floating around. And um, it's usually, like I said, it's thing for people that uh, basically they're trying to teach Islam or, you know, basically they're passing off information without the proper knowledge. And most of it is based off of people's personal desires or what someone thought was correct. So Allah is truly amazing and Allah is the greatest because we all have different paths and we all have came to Islam. Most people that are not Muslim came to Islam through different ways. So, you know, if you truly have in your heart and you truly want to do what is right, Allah will guide you. Just know he will guide you to the correct sources because there's so much, there's so many people in so many different sects of Islam, you will be so confused. If you really want to follow what's right, all you have to do in your heart, just just know that Allah will guide you. And that's all that I wanted to say. Oh, Sister Rahima, it is very easy and simple. Whatever the Prophet has taught you, follow that. If he forbid you to do something, so stay away from that. So in the whole Quran, uh, again, I will go back to what Sister Leila mentioned, reflection, like like to uh, not only to memorize the whole Quran, but you have to reflect and to know the meaning of the verses. So there are many verses in the whole Quran, direct people to follow the uh, the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But if you don't have a reference to say that this is the, what the Prophet did, so don't mention it to me. I'm not going to listen to it. Because nowadays you have Muslims who claim that they are Muslim, and part of their worship is to dance and to say, Allah, 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 Allah. Did the Prophet did that and his companion? And they say, we love the Prophet, we love Allah. Okay, they love the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the love of Allah more than you. Do you think that we love Allah and his prophet more than Sayyidina Abu Bakr or Sayyidina Umar? No. Okay. Follow their footsteps. Don't innovate or don't, don't come up with a new version of the, the, the Islam. So I agree with you. We have to be careful about that. And from home, we, uh, we take our uh like guidelines we take our religion because 
um, we, we can be somewhere else and we don't know. So you're right. And that's right. the number one way Shaitan gets those of us who claim to believe in Allah. He will tempt us to steer away from the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of those companions. Because like Dr. Asim said, nobody understood this religion better than they. And you know, nowadays you hear all these people issuing fatwas and saying things about Islam that contradict what those companions said. You tell them what Ibn Abbas said, you show them the authentic hadith from Bukhari, what they said, oh, well, but still, Sheikh so-and-so said. So that's the number one way to, that's, well, that's one of the top 10 ways that Shaitan takes us away from our natural purpose too, by uh, causing us to deviate away from the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's that well or well better, our allegiance, Where's your allegiance? It's supposed to be to Allah and to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And like the yeah, Prophet time, said- if Yeah, you, life is very short. Yeah. Life is very short and we are going to go to our graveyard uh, at any time. So when the, nobody will be questioned about us, we will be held accountable. Mm -hmm. Everybody will be questioned about himself or herself. So that's why our main purpose in our life is to find the truth and to follow the truth, not to live uh, confused and uh, not to live uh, craving for uh, worldly desire or for job or for death and spaced out. And all of a sudden you find the angel of death comes to you and say, I'm going to take your soul. <laughs> oh, no, give me one hour. Yes, in the Holy Quran it says, Oh Allah, let me go back to life so I will do good. And another verse, would you return me to life even an hour? Now you have plenty of times. And we spent that time in front of the television, in front of this, and it's chatting and uh, gossiping. And so we have to focus and to make sure that what we do is the truth, we follow the truth, and we exert our efforts to get close to Allah. And this is the best life that you can have ever experienced. You will have the true happiness from Allah. Forget about all the worldly desire. This is nothing. So, um, do we have anybody else, Sister Laya? That is anyone else would like to contribute? May Leon, did you ever get back? Sharmila? I think that's it. So, Sister Sharmila, Sharmila. She yeah. contributed last time. Yeah, Sharmila, go she... ahead. I think Sharmila wants to talk. Yeah, go ahead, Sharmila. Okay. She's trying to turn on her mic. Can you get your mic on? I see it's open, but it's not turned on. Yeah, connect it, just, you know, turn it on. She can't get her mic on. While she's trying to adjust her mic, no one else? Uh, uh, May Leon still and Mona? Um, oh, there she is. Can I come in? Like Can you hear me? Yes, we. that's John Louis. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, oh. John Louis, go ahead. No, I just have one more point. I just made it home. Um, Sister Lisa brought up a very good point, and I, I could relate to it very much so. Like previously, you know, being in a setting with the, the smoking and, you know, visually seeing a movie or, or, you know, whatever. You know, you want to be in that setting because, of course, you're watching it or whatnot. But when it brings you back in a time because those urges are still there, <laughs> Yeah, you're living in that moment and you're in, it's like you're, you're going through it. That craving is still there. But at the same time, it's like you're asking a lot, you know, you're telling a lot, thank you. Like you're telling your voice within, like, I don't need that. I'm not there no more. I am not going to let my, my body, my mind succumb to whatever I'm watching, regardless if I have a craving. I don't need that alcohol. My body is 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 um it, it got rid of it. 
It doesn't have a, you know, a, a need or want for that. I've got better for that. Like that cure afterwards, like I don't need to go back to that sickness. I don't need to go back to that marijuana, that sickness. I don't need to go back to that cigarette regardless um, that craving is there because, you know, we get a thrill of the puff and the whole aesthetic of the smoke or whatnot. But then when you think back, you're like, I, I didn't feel good. I didn't like the way it tasted. How did it make my body feel? Yeah, I wanted that moment of that pleasure, but I also want to retain that moment of the cure after and how well I felt recovering from that. So, you know, we're going back and forth, you know, the, the fighting with your nas. But the beautiful thing about that and the help of the recovery of having a lost friend to what's Isla, you have come to the place to be comfortable with your decision of not going back and not having that pull and want for it, but you still have it. But it's quick as quickly how you turn it down, you know? Because what you gain is so much bigger than going back to it. So whom did he lost? Yeah, I think that's the Thank you, Lord, is the sister Sharmila at home? I, I think she can't work her mic. She's trying to, it's on, but she can't, we can't hear her. Well, inshallah, next time she would uh, be able inshallah. to fix her microphone. So uh, at the end, I will mention that uh, it is very important to uh, change the group of people. If you, if somebody has become addicted to something, so in order to go back, Allah and uh, to cleanse yourself from this mistakes um, you need to change your friend uh, because some of them will act as a human devil shayateen al ins um, you need to uh, to make tawbah a sincere tawbah um, sometimes you need to change uh, your place, like the home you are in, the house, you change it to another place. So anything that reminds you with these sins and mistakes, uh, do your best to change the location. And Allah wa will help you through. Uh, Jazakum Allah khairan. That was a good discussion today. And inshallah, next week we'll have a discussion reflection on the night journey. Uh, Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wal-Asr, inna al-insana lafi qusr, illa al-ladhina amanu wa amnu al-salihati wa tawasaw bil-haq wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasufun, wa salamu ala al-mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.